Hey guys, something has come up recently in a lot of my conversations with people is the idea of local storage versus cloud storage. So today we're gonna to cover the benefits of both and the downsides. There is a good use case for each of these scenarios, but there's a lot of factors to consider when you're deciding for your business and how you wanna move forward. Before we dive in, I do wanna remind you guys that if you want to see more content like this, you go and hit that subscribe and like button. Um, I'd really appreciate it. You can also, if you wanna continue this conversation on with me, you can comment below, let me know what storage you use. Is it cloud, is it local? What local hardware do you use? Um, and we can also continue this conversation on Twitch. I do typically stream Sunday and Thursday nights. Uh, so you can drop in there and chat and let me know kind of the same things, what storage to use. So let's go ahead and dive in. <clears throat> and guys, I'm super excited because, well, today's my birthday. So, you know, if you wanna give me a birthday gift, hit that subscribe button, follow me on Twitch, it'd be great. You know, all those things. But anyways, <laughs> let's go ahead and begin. Um, to start off, I do wanna make sure we are on the same page about the differences between cloud and local storage. So we're gonna go ahead and define those. But to get something out of the way, what we're not talking about is your computer storage. And that can be summed up really easily. The computer storage is what runs your OS and you should be using a solid state drive, done. Like don't use a hard drive for your, for your main OS, use a solid state, you'll thank me later if you aren't. So that, that ends it. Um, but let's go ahead and jump into local storage. So local storage is basically a piece of hardware that's sitting in your office. This is storage that um, you've set up or someone in your building and you're able to actually see it. So this is local storage. The sole purpose of it is for storage. It's not, it doesn't do anything else. It's just storage in your office that you're able to access and you share files with your employees. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about local storage. Now, cloud storage is kind of that similar idea it's not actually in the cloud where some people think it might be, but it's actually in data centers around the nation, around the globe, um, in a lot of different places. Um, think of it as something where a company has invested millions in and a really important factor in cloud storage is that's geo redundant. And that becomes really important later. I'm gonna explain that more later, but basically it's set up to where if something fails, it, they're gonna be able to recover your data like 99% of the time, we'll get to that. But it is on a much larger scale than local storage that you would have in your office and it's just more easily accessible. But let's go ahead and dive in. We're gonna jump into local storage first and kind of the benefits and downsides of that first. So what's really exciting for me is when I got my local storage, I actually got to set it up with my kids. So they unpackaged the drives, they put it all in. I used a Synology device, which I would highly recommend. And it was an eight bay device, it has 24 terabytes of usable space now. Um, but go ahead, I will drop some links in the description below. If you're looking for local storage, that's a great device. I'll put a few of the Synologies in there just in case you're looking. Um, but as you think of local storage, there are quite a few factors you want to consider when you're looking at local storage. So number one, are you constantly using large files? This is really relevant when you're on site, because if you're using those large files and you're on site, you're, you have that speed that you can transfer just locally, and it's going to be much faster than what your internet can upload and download from the internet. So think of it as, I have a cable that can go about a gig per second, your network, let's say it's a gig. So you can transfer things up to a gig between your local storage and your computer. Um, most people have a network in a small business around 30 to 50 to 100 megs per second, uh, which is 10% of what you can do locally. So if you're working on a ton of large files and transferring them back and forth, and you're in your business in the local area, this is going to be a lot faster. Um, it's going to give you kind of that speed benefit of being local. Uh, so that's one factor to consider. If you're really just working on the files in your office and that's what you're using it for, it's going to be a lot faster than if you're trying to upload and download from the cloud. Another one to really consider along those lines is if you have a slow internet connection. Upload is really important in this speed too. So most people with Comcast get about 10 megs per second, um, which is actually really slow. So that's like 1% as if you're in your local network. 
So when you are uploading and downloading, your internet speed is crucial. Um, you wanna have a really fast internet speed or pretty fast if you're uploading to the cloud all the time uh, and working there. But locally, it actually bypasses the internet speed because everything's local in your network. So you're not actually going out to the internet to access these files. You're staying internal inside of your network. Um, this is super important. One of the uh, questions that was asked is, hey, I want to get local storage, but I want to set up a VPN so I can get those files when I'm not at the office. Um, this was an interesting concept because really that makes it to where you're dependent on your internet speed at your house, but you're also dependent on the internet speed at your work. And so there's going to be this huge discrepancy in how fast or how slow uh, you're going to get your files. Um, so if you're going to be using a VPN to get all of your files and work on them as a normal, um, then it's a little bit harder and local storage might not be for you. Another benefit of local storage is the strict file permissions that you're able to set up on your files. This is becoming a little less of a benefit for local storage as other cloud platforms are starting to make advances in what they're able to do. Um, but locally, you're able to set up a lot more file permissions when you tie it into Windows Active Directory um, and setting up permissions based off of groups and ensuring that people can't access files in the local storage that they shouldn't. So that's really a big benefit there. Um, Dropbox and Box have done a really good job of, and yes, I did say Dropbox and Box, they're two different companies. And they've done a really good job at this um, and they're getting there, but there's a big benefit in kind of that local storage and what you're able to control in terms of permissions. And this really ties into the next one is compliance. If you have an issue with compliance, it changes this entire conversation. Um, there's benefits to being local, especially with compliance when you, but you have to tie in other add-ons to where you're tracking usage, you're tracking everything. Um, but cloud storage, some of them have it tied in to where you can be HIPAA compliant or other compliance issues that you might be facing. Uh, so th just so you know, if you're talking about compliance and trying to meet specific compliance regulations, go ahead and contest, contact us. Um, you can reach us out to us on our website or the email that's listed here. So to sum up local storage, essentially it's great for file permissions. If you're transferring back and forth all the time, it's not gonna kill your internet speed. And it's really good if you're working in the office. Um, those are really the three benefits. So make sure that you, if you're wanting to go to local storage, as I mentioned earlier, I did use Synology and I will have some uh, links in the description below where you can find the same devices or recommended uh, local storage device hardware that uh, you can use at your business. And if you're having an issue setting them up, like always, just reach out to us, like I said earlier, and let us know and we can get you set up with your local storage if that's what you need. All right, so we're gonna move into cloud storage now. And what I said at the beginning was geo-redundant storage. This is the biggest benefit of cloud storage. And it's really important. It, it basically takes this idea of local storage where you have this one device, which is in a RAID configuration. So if a drive fails, it's okay. But what happens if that device fails? The whole device gets in a fire or uh, gets damaged in some way. What are you going to do then? You should have a good backup plan. So make sure you count that into your local storage planning. But when you're with cloud storage, when that device fails, the cloud storage companies have such a large data center that an entire device or an entire da data center can just drop off and your storage will be still be safe because they're geo redundant. They're copying your drive space, all of your information in a different other data center. And by the way, they have huge security teams. They're monitoring their security is much better than any security that you'll be able to provide by yourself as they have multi millions of dollars to provide that security. So as you're looking at this, you might think local storage is really cheap because you can just set it up and you're good to go, but there are some bottlenecks. Um, so let's talk about those bottlenecks that cloud storage kind of resolves. Storage limitations. Uh, with local storage, you're really dialing in, and I'm not talking enterprise, but you're dialing into a smaller set of storage space, if that's what you're, you're looking at. You don't really want to invest hundreds of thousands of dollars into your storage and get a little bit back. So 
The benefit of cloud storage is in most of these, for a pretty cheap fee, you can get unlimited storage and store all of your data there. And like I said, it'll be geo redundant. Um, your network speed for external, the that's another one that it solves is really these companies, this is what they do. They build their network so you can access your files from anywhere. Like they've worked really hard to do this. And the downside of local storage, like I was saying earlier, is your network at home, in your network at your office, is really your limiting factor. But once you move to cloud storage, your network at home is really the only limiting factor because they've done so much and they've done a lot that helps you get your files faster than if you were to go even through a VPN and have the same speeds at your work as at home. So they've done a lot to make sure that you can get your files faster. Uh, and I touched on this a little bit is security. They have an entire team. Like you can't hire a team as large as them as a small or mid-sized business. You're not going to be able to. So they have a whole team watching out for your data to ensure that it's safe, which is a really important thing because cloud companies, they have entire teams dedicated to protecting your data, whether it's storage, whether it's email, whether it's anything that you're, you're doing in the cloud, they have teams to protect it. Yes, they are a larger target. Yes, they do get breached sometimes, um, but it's gonna be way easier if somebody wants to get your data to breach you than it is to breach cloud storage. The other part is backups. And no matter where you're at, this is an issue, whether it's local storage or cloud storage, they don't really resolve them. Cloud storage does have more redundancy in their drives, but I've heard horror stories that people have lost all of their files. So make sure that you have a backup plan no matter which one you choose. So let's quickly hit the benefits of cloud again before we kind of wrap this up is basically they have speed. They've invested millions of dollars in their network. They've invested millions into their security team to ensure that your data is safe. Uh, they're redundant, geo redundant. So their data centers are all over the globe, making sure that your data is copied the way it should be. Uh, and really for cloud, you have a smaller upfront cost. Yes, in the life of the time, it might cost more, but for small and mid-sized businesses, if you want the same type of outcome that you would get with cloud storage, it's not gonna cost you more. You're gonna pay less through the lifetime of your storage if you go with cloud rather than trying to invest into your network, your storage, all of that stuff. So the upfront cost, is very high with local, it's very low with cloud, but there is an ongoing fee with cloud, kind of like in maintenance in your drives. If a drive fails or your hardware fails, you have to replace it. So there's even is an ongoing cost in local storage. So really what I'm saying is cloud storage is going to be better for you if you're a small and mid-sized business. There's very few use cases where cloud storage isn't going to be better. Um, and so really you have a few options. You have Dropbox, Google Drive, and Box. Those are the top three that I know of. So Dropbox, like I said, they've done a lot better in their file permissions. They become a lot great and more granular. And so you're able to share folders inside of folders, which is kind of new for Dropbox. Um, then Google Drive, their permissions aren't great, but they're you you just have to share folders and it's very easy to share publicly um, in Google Drive. So if you're going to use Google Drive, it's a great storage platform, but be really careful about your permissions as you could over permiss people to access files. Box is another company, box.com, that I was the first one that I heard of that was really HIPAA compliant. And that's their permissions, their security. Uh, it's much higher. So if you're looking for co compliance, look at Box. They've done a really good job at trying to figure out how to meet compliance, especially with HIPAA compliance. Um, and so personally, my favorite, if you couldn't tell in all these conversations, is really Dropbox. Uh, while I do really like Google Drive, I think their ability to overshare uh, is kind of concerning. Um, but if you're already using Google in mail, you should just use Google Drive. You don't have to switch to Dropbox. That's not what I'm saying at all. Don't take on that extra cost if you don't have to. But if you don't want your storage system tied to your email system, uh, Dropbox is a great solution. As always, uh, I do appreciate you tuning into my video. Uh, if you do like this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button to see more content like this. Um, and remember, hey, it's my birthday, so that would be pretty awesome to get at least 25 more subscribers on my birthday. 
Um, but yeah, so let me know what storage device you use in the comments. I'd love to hear from you, um, whether it's here or on Twitch. I'll talk to you soon and I'll see you guys next time.